The Northwest Marine Technology coated wire tag injector is capable of cutting and delivering thousands of tags per hour to the tip of its injecting needle. When the goal is to tag large numbers of fish as rapidly and effectively as possible, it may be useful to use a positioning jig or mold to hold the fish to control the direction and depth of tag penetration. Using this method, experienced workers commonly tag Pacific salmon at rates from 600 to 1,000 per hour. It is important to clarify at the start that the use of coated wire micro tags began with salmon and trout, and tags were placed in the nose or snout because they are retained and recovery is convenient. As a result, coated wire tags are often referred to as nose tags. This misnomer has tended to limit experimental uses of coated wire tags on new species to anatomical areas in the snout. In some cases, snout implantation in new species has been successful, while in other species, different tag locations are superior. For example, tagging in cheek muscle at rates approaching those achieved with salmon has become the standard method used for striped bass. This tagging is currently practiced without a head mold by impaling the fish on a fixed needle, although new kinds of molds may facilitate this procedure as well. A host of other suitable tag locations in or behind the head undoubtedly exist, and we have yet to encounter a species of fish of suitable size that cannot be successfully coated wire tagged. Muscle, cartilage, adipose, and connective tissue all appear biologically suitable for receiving implanted coated wire tags. Determining potential locations for tagging should include sociological, biological, and practical factors. For example, consideration should be given to problems that might result from attempting to recover tags from tissue that, if damaged, could significantly diminish real or aesthetic value. Edible portions of fish may be avoided for this reason, and tagging near sensitive organs, open sinuses, or articulating parts should also be avoided if possible. Practical considerations include such things as potential difficulties in recovering and or detecting tags from fish that have grown enormously since tagging. Northwest Marine Technology offers a service in examining new species and suggesting anatomical locations for tagging. Although positioning jigs may become useful for other forms of coated wire tagging, we are only aware of their common use in snout tagging salmonids and certain other species. Accurate coated wire tag placement is critical for achieving high retention, minimizing biological effects, and in facilitating efficient tag recovery. In this photograph of a sectioned head of a sub-adult coho salmon, a properly placed tag is visible. The tag rests between cartilage on the midline in muscle, adipose, and fibrous tissue, well forward of the olfactory lobes of the brain. Since the size of the tag placement area, or target, is directly related to the size of the fish to be tagged, precision is most critical in small fish. Species and the size-specific head molds are therefore required for most snout tagging. However, head molds are more versatile with increasing size. The three smallest head molds in the Chinook and Coho Salmon series are designed for fish ranging from 1,000 to 600 per pound, 40% increase in weight, whereas the three largest molds can accommodate specimens ranging from 20 to 5 per pound, a 400% increase in weight. There is a simple but effective method for making head molds. Improvements can be made, and we urge you to consider this possibility, especially if you will be making significant numbers. A list of materials you will need includes a head mold base, head mold fabrication jig. You'll need modeling clay, casting resin or dental acrylic, some small disposable cups and stirring rods for mixing plastic, tag injection needles, and some ordinary sewing needles approximately the same diameter as the injector needles, or slightly smaller. 
Some masking tape about one to two inches wide, depending on fish size. Shaping tools, including a Dremel type grinding tool, files, sandpaper, and polishing materials. Needle nosed pliers and scissors are needed. And some clear spray film is optional for polishing. The first step involved in making a head mold is selecting a specimen approximately the size to be tagged and dissecting the head of the specimen to determine the desired tag location. This is usually the cartilage or muscle attachments located immediately in front of the eyes. The next step in choosing a specimen which will be the form around which the plastic is cast. The relative size of this fish is important. Choose one from among the largest of the size range you wish to tag. Smaller fish can usually fit into larger molds, but not larger fish into smaller molds. As we indicated earlier, a given mold can accommodate a surprisingly large size spread, but at some point smaller or larger molds will be needed. This will become obvious with tagging experience, but NMT can provide suggestions for commonly tagged species. Fresh specimens are most convenient, but fish preserved in formalin are satisfactory. Direct preservation in alcohol tends to desiccate the fish. It is useful to convert formalin preserved specimens to alcohol for a short period before use to avoid the unpleasant effects of formaldehyde. In this demonstration, we will make a head mold for 25 per pound, approximately 120 millimeter lake trout. It will be for a mouth open tagging, so only the upper jaw is placed in the mold. Separate the head from the body at the nape or as far back as you want the top of the mold to extend. Remove the lower jaw, being careful not to cut or displace the maxillary bones of the upper jaw. Next, make a guide hole for inserting a tagging needle by using a tapered sewing needle of equal or less maximum diameter compared to the tagging needle. Insert the sewing needle along the path of the desired needle penetration during tagging. Push the needle until the end comes out of the severed head section at an appropriate midline point. Calculate in advance where this should be to assure the tag will be inserted in the proper direction. Remove the sewing needle and replace it with a tagging needle, which has had its nylon ball removed. In preparing the head mold base, it's a good idea to etch the size and species of fish into the base. The two grooves in the base should be filled with modeling clay to prevent leakage of the casting resin. Trim off any excess with a sharp knife. Put another small lump of clay inside the head mold base to seal the area around the needle. Push the head mold base onto the casting jig. Place a strip of masking tape around the side of the base flush with the top edge so excess casting resin will not stick. Insert the blunt end of the needle containing the fish head through the hole in the head mold base and into the hole in the casting jig. Position the specimen so that clearance between the nose and the head mold base is one to two millimeters for large specimens. Clearance for very small specimens can be perhaps as large as six millimeters. Apply masking tape around the head mold base as high as the top of the fish head in order to contain the casting resin. Now mix the casting resin with catalyst according to directions on the container. If stirring creates bubbles, let them rise and disappear before pouring the mold. As the resin cures, it will first gel. When it is firm enough to hold its shape, remove the needle, the tape, and the specimen. Also remove excess resin, especially around the aluminum base. Allow it to cure in a warm place, such as a warming tray, until it is reasonably hard. Depending upon the proportion of catalyst and temperature, this may take a few hours or overnight. When the resin is firm, re-drill the needle hole, starting at the base, using a number 73 drill. Now the mold can be trimmed and shaped with a grinding tool. Using a coarse bit, cut away the bulk of excess plastic. Keep in mind the general shape you are aiming toward. 
In particular, it is useful to remove most of the plastic from where the fish's eyes will be. Marking the eye outlines on the inside of the rough plastic with pencil or dark ink as a guide for cutting is helpful. In the finished mold, the fish's eyes should either remain clear of the mold or at most contact smooth, rounded surfaces. Another feature which establishes the fundamental mold shape is the ledge which supports the upper jaw. Because the lower jaw goes underneath, it should be thin with sufficient underside clearance so as to avoid forcing the lower jaw into an injurious gape as shown in this bad example. The distance the ledge goes into the mouth should not exceed clearance in the smallest fish which will be used. Smooth the external surface and provide relatively flat surfaces, especially on the side toward the tagger, so the fit of the fish in the mold can be most effectively observed through the clear plastic. The inside of the mold should be smoothed, so there are no bumps or ridges to tear or bruise the fish. But little material should be removed, so the general shape is preserved. The jaw ledge should be smooth and flat and the edges where the teeth and maxillary bones may scrape or catch should be slightly relieved with a fine cutter. During these final shaping operations to the inside of the mold, it is useful to periodically place a test fish in the mold to check the fit. When you believe the result is satisfactory, hold the test fish in the mold while pushing a tagging needle through the mold into the fish, simulating machine operation. Pull the fish out with the needle still in it and observe the entry point and needle angle in terms of your design criteria. If acceptable, the mold is complete. The final operation is sanding and polishing or spraying with a clear film to enhance clarity and appearance. Proper head mold construction can be the key to accurate and efficient coated wire tagging. This capability presents the manager or researcher with the opportunity to test a host of variables that can have a profound impact on harvest levels, wise resource uses, or fish culture practices.